Welcome back, everybody. Hey, Nick, uh, we've got some kind of exciting news, haven't we? Super crazy exciting, I should say. It is what the people have demanded. That's right. Our Patreon subscribers have requested that we create a Talk Talk to Me Discord, and we have done so. We have done it. It is available. The link will be going out to $5 members very soon. That's right. And Nick, for people like me who only heard about Discord recently or have never heard of it, what is it basically? So it's really just a specific chat program. They call them servers because you can have multiple chat rooms under an umbrella of a heading of a server. So ours would be the Talk Told to Me server. And then there would be several different umbrellas of categories of chat rooms that everyone can pop in and out of and participate in. That's right. So we've got a couple of different channels within our, our Discord. We have mm -hmm. a tall, you know, direct tall talk mm -hmm. channel where uh, members can talk with each other about Jethro Tull, the songs, lyrics, etc. We have a random other stuff channel. A miscellaneous whatever you want to talk about. Be silly. Yeah, I recommend that people serious. upload pictures of their cats in that one. Ooh. Although maybe we need a separate cats channel. I think that might actually warrant an, another one, yeah. And then what else is there? Uh, we have a an introduce yourself yeah. channel. Just pop in, say, hey, who you are. Maybe what you have been named by us, like a feckless mom sure. or uh, Doc Savage, etc. And uh, finally... Just one that I, I really like is a, a media suggestion channel. Just if yeah. you have any recommendations, movies, music, video, television, whatever. Podcasts. You, whatever podcasts. Uh, books. Books. Anything in those? there. I do. I do remember books. I'm actually reading a physical book right now. Amazing. Um, well, well not, maybe you should put it down and pay right attention now. to recording. I should. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty rude. And then the other big thing to talk about with the Discord, which we're super excited to to release to y'all, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is that neither Nick nor I really have the time to, what's the word? Babysit? Babysit the Discord. <laughs> so we're going to take a laissez-faire approach to it. Mm -hmm. However, we will be monitoring it and, you know, maybe occasionally participating in it. Mm -hmm. And what we are excited about is expanding the community for people to, and space for people to talk about tall. And to make that possible, to make sure that that is a safe space, we are going to make sure that there is no bad stuff. Nothing oh offensive. God. This is not... <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Nothing... I mean, nothing offensive. I think I, I mentioned to, to Doc Savage, who was like, how are you going to do all of this? And I basically said, like, we're all adults. You know, I, I trust everyone to treat each other like adults. The key word, I think, is respect. Respect. What we expect is for people to respect each other's beings and boundaries. And opinions. And, and opinions. You know, we have a lot of different opinions about Tull, obviously. And we're here just to have a good time. So, no, certainly no racist or sexist type of uh, behavior is going to be tolerated. And uh, But I'm, I'm really not worried. I think that, yeah. I think that our listeners are are stand-up people who can self-regulate, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of the chats. Yeah, w what it boils down to is don't be a D. There will be a zero-tolerance law in effect. I will lay waste to your crops like an angry god. <laughs> Again, I'm not worried. You're not worried. We're excited. We're excited. So give us $5, tune in to the Discord chat, and you can chat tall amongst yourselves to your heart's content and we'll just we'll be on the the sidelines like creepers just watching travelers and caravanists lay down your weary load sample the local delicacies and escape through a drainage pipe before the authorities arrive <laughs> because it's time to talk tall to me Whee! I left my shoe back there. You'll never get it back. Might as well just find another one. Yeah. That's why I always wear mismatched shoes. There you go. Welcome back, everyone. I am Omen Said. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are Feckless Momes. And this is Talk Tall to Me. A disreputable scuttle through the nicer neighborhood of Prague Rock, in which Nick and I will solve a series of odd mysteries 
only to leave bigger ones in their places. We will cause a scene at the Palmer High School dance, have an unlikely win at Old Man Glasscock's poker game, and win the heart of stern librarian Miss Palmer, all with Sheriff Anderson hot on our trail. Yes, every intrigue a song, every new town an album, we will trick and scam our way through the entire discography of seminal prog rock band Jethro Tull. That, indeed, we will. Omen, hi. Welcome back. Hey, Nick. Welcome back to you. We are about halfway through side B, side two. Yeah. Of? Of? Songs from the Wood. Songs from the Wood. We, as we are recording all of our correspondence for the Talk Tall With Me's, we have nothing, so we can kind of jump right into the song at hand. And Nick, where do you find those Talk Tall With Me's? Those would be on our Patreon, patreon.com slash talk tall to me. Amazing. That's right. Go sign up and get access to Talk Tall With Me and Outtake Tall To Me. My personal favorite is just us being idiots uh, and sharing that, that valuable material with everybody. So because of that, we have nothing to share directly with you, sweet listeners. So We've got nothing to say. That's an interesting choice to put a completely different tune under there. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't remember the original. <laughs> So, instead of talking about nothing to say, let's We talk... have a new segment called, What Are You Baking? <laughs> uh, Omen, did you bake something recently? I did, and I want to tell you about it. Past the, the pan of Crimson Wonder? <laughs> crimson Wonder Bread? We'll find this there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Bread. So, yes. uh, my wife loves cake mm-hmm. above, above just about anything else in the world. That's why she married the cake man. That's why, hey, I, I, so, yeah, exactly. I was the, I was the cake man. That's it. That's it. And, uh, I, I had a little bit of time off after our, after our trip. Oh, this is weird in. Yeah, this is. Desequencing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a little time off and I thought my wife was at work and I thought, hey, hey, why don't I uh, bake a cake for my wife? Cause, uh, cause I'm the cake man. (laughs) And so I got out the. Man. The English cookbook from her mother and uh, looked up a, a recipe for English buttercream. And I made what's called an all-in-one cake, which is a sort of a variation on a Victoria sponge. And I added l- a zest of lemon and a little lemon juice to the cake and funfetti sprinkles. So it was a lemon funfetti cake. And I made a, a buttercream, an English buttercream with macerated strawberries and a little bit of rum from you, actually. The rum was from me. The, the rum was from you, yeah. The, the spiced, and, sp- spiced Caribbean something, something. Yes, botanical, botanical Haitian rum. Yeah, basically gin- ginified rum, which is just yeah, the way I much. like it. Yeah, just a little, just a little, just a little bit of it in the in the buttercream. And uh, I didn't dice the outside of the cake because that's a no-no with uh, this kind of English cake. Ooh. And I put straw, I decorated it with fresh strawberries, both inside and out. And it was frickin' delightful. Frickin' amazing. That sounds really good. The picture looked fantastic. My wife ate it up, and so did I. And now I am fat. Now I have regrets. It's, It's funny. Regrets snowball. You can regret something that you did 20 minutes ago, like eat too much cake, and then it just spirals. Yeah, because you're like, well, you know, I feel bad, but you know what would make me feel better? (laughs) Slice of this cake. <laughs> I might as Call well call re- the cake man. <laughs> I might as well regret the last five years of my life. As long as I'm regretting, let's get it all out there. So that's what I baked, and uh, I just wanted to share that with everyone. It turned out really well, and yeah. and I baked it from scratch. That's fantastic. Thank you. You rolled each individual sprinkle by hand. I did. Yep. I did. Yep. Took you weeks. Yeah. Speaking of wives, I also have one. And I have, I not a actually, I actually, <laughs> I actually interviewed my wife for the song we're about to talk about today. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And what is that song, Nick? Oh, that song is The Whistler. The Whistler. 
That's right. That is exactly what it is. So shall we uh, shall we take a listen to that little interview real quick? Yes, let's. Okay, here we have my lovely wife, Raven, who has agreed so graciously to to grace us with her presence on this monumental occasion, I would say. So Raven, hi, how are you? Are you prepared for this? I am well prepared. Okay, so I think it's 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 well known at this point your distaste for tall, correct? I think I heard you mention it on the podcast once or twice. The once or twice that you've listened to the yeah. podcast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you 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 do you have an active distaste or is it really just like meh, I could I could listen to something else. Or do you like with a fiery passion hate tall? Honey. If I was in the car and it came on the radio, <laughs> I, and you weren't there, I would change it. Yeah, because you <laughs> you hear me play it all the time. Yes, so I think that's an active. No, I'll, I'm I'm classifying that as passive. <laughs> but the point of this whole this whole talk is, you happen to like, the Whistler. Yeah. Is it safe to say like? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tell me. Tell me why. Tell me why. Is that Backstreet Boys? Yes. Tell me why. Well, there are a lot of instruments. To uh, start. You could listen to all of Tall. That is not a, a valid. Mm, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. When I hear you listening to it, I don't hear quite that much going on. Well, this <laughs> album, there's a lot going on. I may have to enforce, inflict. Is this the album? Enforce. This is the album that has the lullaby for our song. Yeah. Our, our son. Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I like this one because it, it's not r- repetitive. I don't know that much of Tull is repetitive, I can't say. But in general, I like music that, that you know, kind of takes a journey. Okay. Do you disagree? Is it repetitive? I think it's, I think it's one of the more repetitive songs the chorus, that they have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the chorus comes out a couple times, but... Okay. Yeah, no, it's the chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Go on. Well... <laughs> While we're on the topic of instruments, you know how much I enjoy Carbon Leaf. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that little flute that they play. The penny whistle? Is that a penny whistle? The, the, yeah, that Barry plays. Yeah, it's a penny whistle. I couldn't, I looked up a list of instruments for the whistler and I couldn't find. The whistle, he's playing the flute. But is someone paying, playing the penny whistle? No. <laughs> it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like they are. It reminds me of Carbon Leaf. It's fun, uh, it's kind of jaunty. That being said, empty hats from the the fair, Carl Ash plays this song using the penny whistle. Okay. So, I mean, there, it's it's transferable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go on, go on. There are a lot of tall songs that are very prog rock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We do not like prog rock. We know. We, we In this household, we know you do not like prog rock. <laughs> so, when there's a nice folky one, like this one. Like this album. Like this and album. then Heavy okay. Horses. Okay. After this, <laughs> maybe I really enjoy it. I realized today, while I was, you know, sitting down and actually listening to the song instead of kind of like bopping to it when you <laughs> chance played it. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. It was all based on me seeing you move to this song <laughs> in a non-pained way. So <laughs> that inspired the the question oh. of you actually liking this song. Yeah. It reminds, his voice at certain parts and the, kind of the song as a whole reminds me of Cat Stevens. Mm-hmm. In particular, you know, if you want to sing out, sing out that song. Mm-hmm. Well, if you want to sing out, sing out. And if you want to be free, be free. And it's just fun and playful. And I noticed also that I like the lyrics in this song. Okay. If I think the lyrics are dumb, or if oh, I can't yeah, you are, them, yeah, you are lyric centric. I can't like the song. Yeah, li- so. lyric centric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is also a little instrumental breakdown, just a little over halfway, that sounds like one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> and like real guilty, like I won't even let myself listen to oh, them. Oh no, you should be. You should feel <laughs> guilt over this. Well, I had a fondness 
when I was like 13 for Blackmore's Night. And blame your mother for that. <laughs> and that little breakdown. But yeah. Just no, I mean, brings me right. Back. Like I said, I said to you earlier that yeah. that there is 100% legitimacy in, in hearing Black Morris Knight in anything told of. Mm -hmm. Lastly, this song makes me think of that first year of us dating, because I am fairly certain you played this at some point during that summer. I, I, was I visiting must you. have. I must have. So I mean, hearing it is just kind of like an instant back to okay. freedom college and my cool new boyfriend. <laughs> now I'm your, your boring old husband. Driving me through the back roads of upstate New York <laughs> listening to Tull. Yeah, uh, to my cabin where I keep the rest of the bodies. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I think that just goes to prove that there is so much for Tull that a lot of people don't know. That they span so much sound and experience that even if say you don't like Aqualung, you could like Songs from the Wood. There might be a little bit of tall for everyone. That's it. Moral of the story. Raven McGill, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Do you want to plug anything while you're while you're in the oh, booth? Sure. I am an artist. And you can find me on Instagram at raven.mcgill, M-A-G-I-L-L. They, you don't need to spell McGill. They don't necessarily look at your name and make a letter. They better. All of you better. Judging by how often our name is misspelled, Fair enough. I'm guaranteeing someone here was like, oh, I'm not a CG. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Instagram. And if you want to just go straight to the shop, you can go to my website, www.ravenmcgill.com. I've got a gallery, a little shop, fun little subscription service. <laughs> check check her like, out. You know. Check it out. Monthly art delights. Well, thank you, Raven. Thank you. And back to the show. Okay. Nick McGill. There it is. Your wife has such a pleasant voice. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Also, she's awesome. And I just want to say that her artwork is truly fantastic. She's really a, a, a real multimediaist and well worth taking a look at and buying everything that she has. Yeah, she's, she's constantly... Constantly picking up a new thing to do art-wise. So if you don't like one thing, wait a month. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic interview. A couple of interesting things. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if I give myself a minute, I'll remember what they are. Eventually. Yeah. It's okay. So it's funny. It's funny to me that she said that this is a less prog rocky album. I know. I know. Because I, I, I think... She's not as like 1000% immersed in the idea of tall as a whole and yeah, course, prog rock in general. I think, yeah. I think that that helps that it, it is the, the adage ignorance is bliss. I think I also, yeah, I wouldn't really say that this is a very folky sound. This song, not particularly when I did see her bopping to this song, I was, I was gobsmacked. I was super surprised. Yeah. Did she know you were watching? Oh, yeah. She was sitting across the table from me while we were listening to it. And I think we, we've we had a joke with Ray for a long time that she has something called an insatiable dance bug, which oh. is which which Rook inherited that that if she if there's something that that she finds a groove in, she cannot help but move to it. Well, thank God she and Rook weren't born two to three hundred years before because they would definitely have been disliked by the church 100 percent, they would be burned for witches that and yeah. and the, between that and the tourettes like game over yeah game oh yeah over. yeah <laughs> which there was one other thing oh yeah so it's funny to me that ray's association with tull is driving around with her cool boyfriend in upstate new york mm -hmm. listening to it because that's my association <laughs> with tull is this what you do to all the girls nick it's that's how i win them all that this is your one technique it's how i weed out the bad ones that's what it yeah. is <laughs> yeah because they jump out the car window. yeah <laughs> so nick with that amazing interview out of the way uh -huh. do we have anything else to do before we dive right into the song we've got an email from negan yes, i think that warrants have. it's got a it's a little it's a little preamble. It's a little a little kind of background information maybe on this song, potentially. Uh, but I think it's definitely interesting to dive into before we think of the song itself. 
indeed. So here we have a, an email from Negan A. Subject, life's a long Celtic folklore. Message, Nick. I stumbled upon an interesting tale in Scottish folklore. The Piper of the Windy Ha, spelled H-A apostrophe. It's about a cattleman named Peter from Caithness. Undoubtedly mispronouncing that. <laughs> One day in the leafy month of June, he stopped to drink from the well of Sisa and then slept till sunset when he was awakened by the fairy queen. She offered to help him forge his destiny and asked him to choose between a set of magical pipes inlaid with silver or a gold embossed Bible. Peter chose the pipes, obvs, and on his first <laughs> attempt, he played them perfectly despite never having held an instrument before every musician's dream. Before the queen departed, she formed a contract with Peter and said, There is one condition seven years from this day at the exact hour of the evening. You must meet me here by the well of Sisa. Peter returned over the hill of Orlig to Windy Ha, and his parents strongly advised him to, to throw the magical pipes away fearing that they were immoral and evil. Peter knew better and proceeded to cherish his newfound musical abilities and performed across Scotland. Seven years passed, and as the sun set, Peter headed south from Windy Ha over the hill of Orlig towards Sisa Hillock and disappeared over the crest of the hill of Orlig. Orig. Whatever. <laughs> the Scottish hill. Regardless, it's, it's mispronounced. Yes. The sun near its setting poured a flood of yellow radiance over the brown moor, and in the succeeding moonlight, Sisa seemed to glow with more than earthly luster. No one saw Peter ever since, but the queen dwelled in the well, so it is implied that he entered the fairy realm. I made two things out of it. One, in physics we have the confer... Yeah, hold on, everyone. <laughs> this, does, this does make sense. One, in physics, we have the conservation of energy law, and here, with this story, the Andersonian conversion. Meaning Ian Anderson can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, he always returns to the ever-passion play as a mad Scottish piper. I mean, even the details are eerily similar to his life. Or maybe it's just being Scottish legendary. Two, I see the Whistler written all over this story, particularly the but I must be gone by the seventh day. The whole Songs from the Wood album was partially inspired by a book about British slash Celtic folklore, so it's plausible. It may be that the Whistler is trying to seduce someone. He's addressing two types of people here, those he doesn't plan on being faithful to, the chorus part, and the Fairy Queen herself, starting from all kinds of sadness till the end while skipping the chorus in between. Well, Nick... I think that that is a, a wonderful folktale, and, you know, there are lots of folktales from the greater Britain geographical region, which concern the relationships between the mortals and the fairies. I'm thinking, mm. of, of course, of the story of Tamlin. Do you know the story of Tamlin? The name is familiar. I, I don't know the actual tale. Basically... A nice young guy goes strolling in the forest. The fairy queen takes a liking to him and decides she's going to make him her her little mortal plaything. Mm -hmm. And the guy's girlfriend is like, mm -mm. no way, and grabs him. And the fairy queen turns him into a series of difficult things to hold on to. So first mm -hmm. he makes him, mm -hmm. she makes him into a pillar of ice, and then a pillar of fire, and then a a, a wolf with six legs and all these different things, and the girl just keeps holding on all throughout these, and eventually the fairy queen gives up and is like, fine, you can have him. These all smack of various types of mythology, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that this story is really wonderful and appropriate. I had not heard this one before. I think, first of all, thank you, Negan, as, as usual, doing our literature homework. We greatly appreciate it. And I think Negan shared this because... She is thinking more way back to the beginning of this album than we are at this point. That it's, remember, Ian was inspired to write this album because he was reading a book about British folklore. Right. These are songs from the wood. Yeah. Not just the forest that he happens to be living in, but the wood, the mythical wood. 
Right, yeah, yeah, proper noun, capital T, capital Where W. Where the big bad wolf lives. Yeah. Yeah, and like like every culture, they all share similarity in their myths. They all have a flood myth. They all have a creation myth. They all have a trickster god. So regardless of whether it's Scotland or Native American or deep in the heart of the green in, in England, there's going to be some semblance of fairies or something tricking someone or giving someone a gift which then indebts them or they, they just disappear for whatever reason. Yes, and, and specifically the f- stories around the fairy court and their relationships with mortals, they are a highly developed form within this part of the world. There's, I'm thinking of the tale of True Thomas, where Tom, it's a similar thing. Thomas meets the fairy queen and she says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you, quote unquote, with the ability or the curse to never mm. be able to lie. Yeah, right. And he goes back out in the world and it causes a lot of havoc because he can't lie. Right. And then seven years later, he goes and lives with the fairy queen forever. And that ties into the Greek uh, Cassandra, who is cursed to never be able to tell a lie, to always speak the truth, but nobody ever believes her. But then she doesn't get to go live with the fairy queen. No, I think she probably kills herself. (laughs) Sounds right. Or, Or she survives long enough that one of the other gods takes pity on her and and raises her up in, into some some other form, some no, better form dies. than Pretty human. Sure she dies. I think she kills herself. Yeah, yeah. But yes. So with all of that context and with all of these fairies flitting about our forests, shall we dive into the song at long last? Yeah, yeah. Just one, one final note to tie to tie it all together in a in a pretty little bow. It's it's let's not think of this per se, specifically as an Ian anthem, which it can be, which I've said it is. But let's also think of that that mythological fairy tale aspect behind it as well. Indeed. And now songs from the wood side be <laughs> the whistler. The whistler. A listen we shall have, yes? Mm, yes, whistle she, wi- she will. <laughs> I, I lost it. Here we go. <laughs> Oh boy. Nick. Three and a half minutes. Whoa, really? Yeah. It feels so much longer than that. It does. It really does. I'm kind of mad that it wasn't six minutes. Oh my god. And then the seventh minute is only exists in the in the realm of the fairies. Yeah, yeah, you transcend. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's not on the album, but you hear it. It's you you experience it. It kind of is it. like that though. It is like you—you you just need a moment to recover. Yeah. 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 In in real time, it's three minutes long, but but you age mm-hmm. seven minutes every time you listen to it. Yeah, I think that's right. That explains why my back hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> listen to this song way too much. Nick, musically, first, oh just off the bat, gosh. I just want to say, like, oh my god, there's so many instruments. So much going on in this song. So much. It is bonkers and amazing. This song, this song, just I, woo, yeah. powerhouse. Uh, it's it's safe to say that we're both defo fans of this song. I, there is a fun, there's a fun kind of like shell game of who's got the flute in this song. <laughs> Where is it coming from? Who has it? What kind of instrument is it? I, exactly. Yeah. So in the very beginning, we have the flute, and then we have the organ on a flute setting. Yeah. Yep. That weird like synthy part. Yep. Right. And so it's sort of like, oh, uh, ew, oh it, there it the is flute now. Yeah. Later on in the breakdown, I do believe that that iconic part uh-huh. is played on a penny whistle. You do think that's a penny whistle? Okay. Oh yeah, it's not a flute. Okay, I will apologize to Raven. Or at least it's not. If it's a flute, it is a, it is a single key, small wooden flute, not a, okay. a transverse metal flute. Gotcha. Okay. Is that slightly less iconic, but I think still iconic, sound of 
that kind of sour flute note. So come on, I'm the Whistler. I have a fight. Is that the metal flute? Or do you think the whole thing is being played on this, this other mystery flute that we have? Mystery flute. That's the name of my first sex tape. Mm -hmm. You don't have to include that. I Patreon goal for $50 subscribers. Yes. Goo. Our OnlyFans account. Yep. I think that that maybe is the regular flute. I, okay. I, I don't know though. That that one could go either way. It's got a it's got a weird tweak to it. It's got it's it's slightly off pitch or something. There's something going on there with that one, which I think is f funny context wise. Are you reading the review of my first sex tape? Because that's uh, what I said. Oh no, I was not. Slight tweak to it. Slight tweak. Something weird going on. It's kind of sour note. Kind of sour. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but definitely, yeah, definitely the mm -hmm. main bit is... Um, Some other than, than Ian's traditional flute usage. Correct, correct. Yeah. So this, my gosh, this song, off of everything off of this album, this is the bop. This is the rocker. It's the one that gets me moving the most. It slaps. Which is peculiar because it's song number two on side B. What's peculiar about that? Like you would think that you would want to open up with, and I know songs from the wood is is pretty pretty peppy. You know, yeah. all of side A is is really peppy, but there's yeah. something about this one. So I take back that it's peculiar per se, because you do need something mixed in with the kind of slower stuff on side B. Yeah, but I I don't know. It just feels like feels like it should be one of the openers. For you know? me, this song is the shot of espresso that you take after your meal, before your dessert. So you can kind of mm. stay awake and savor what's coming next. Sure. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I like that one. Yeah, because the, the following two songs are whew, pretty heavy. And you know what? Maybe it's a Cafe Coreto with a bit of liquor in it. Or just make it part of your dessert and make it an affogato. affogato? Yeah. Yes. There you I go. I think I will. I, th I think I will. Thank you. Thank you for that <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'll be back. Musically, anything else? I, I love the opener of the, the contrast of the xylophone into yeah. the, what is it, marimba? What's the wood one? Wooden one is a marimba. Marimba. And then this, it's it's a couple of notes on the xylophone, then it goes over to the marimba where it echoes nice and it's a little it's a little deeper, it's a little more kind of felt in the soul, I think. Mm. The acoustic through this entire song is bonkers it is it, it i it has some very very heavy filter on it i don't know if it is you know an echo or a mm. reverb or a combination of those things but yeah. the the sort of source of the guitar sound is buried so far deep yeah in that in that filter mm -hmm. that it does kind of make me feel like you're hearing it from another world on top of that i think some of it has to do with the fact that it's it's such a quick strum through the whole thing, which we don't have often in a Tull song. Yeah, you get to hear yeah. the whole thing. It's really, yeah, and it's, we're not in the, in the previous album where Ian was really, getting into his his finger picking techniques no 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 this is straight up strum chord strumming right banging on the banging on the sixth string yeah this is this is his bon jovi moment his his bon jovi yeah no mm. it's oh my gosh it's so good it's so good and 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 like a lot of the songs off this album we've said it before and we'll we'll continue to say it this jumps in instrumentally. This this throws you right into it. It's not a it's it's not a gradual build like no. like we're kind of accustomed to up until this album. It feels like, for the most part, anyway. Yeah, well, with with too old to rock and roll, we had a lot of really great examples of that beautiful build of instruments, that layering, that slow layering of instruments. This yeah. is really like, yeah, you're diving right into the cake, and you're like, oh, there, there's a strawberry. Oh, there's there's a sprinkle. Yeah. Ah. I'm I'm a, I'm a cake man, and it's be, it's because there's no pageantry to this album. There's no thinking of it as well. How's it going to play out? Literally play out on stage. 
where is the the development where's the process of the song where we have to account for people on stage we have to account for a cinematic feel as opposed to just giving you a song and yet with that kind of rawness and that direct composition i feel like this might be more exciting performed live on stage oh i agree i totally agree because it is a, its own contained thing but it does fit as as a whole into this album but you don't have to you don't have to worry about really telling a story sure uh, overall overall yeah outside of this song yeah i want to talk a little bit about the bass just cuz it glasscock is working over time get ready He's doing some amazing stuff with the bass on this song in particular and just giving us, you know, he he really is doing an unusual thing, I think, for a bassist, which is contributing to the melody. He's not just yeah. laying down a bass line that you build on top of. He's giving you a counterpoint in a way that's really for me, unusual and, and satisfying and delightful. I love Glenn. I love Jeffrey, but John may be my favorite tell bassist. As of yet, I have to agree. For yeah. Myself, yeah. Yeah. He's just so remarkable. Uh, anything else musically, Omen? You know, there is so much more musically, but I, yeah. I don't feel like discussing it. <laughs> it's in 4-4, four, four, I believe. Do we got key changes in here? Is that that going from the really peppy, nice, so come on, I'm the whistler chorus into something like all kinds of sadness I've left behind me or deep red are the sunsets? It gets so dark into those those verses. Is that a key change or is that something a little more, a little simpler, a little more subtle that I of no musical background would not really be able to identify? I don't believe it's a key change. Okay. I believe it is a different, it's just a different uh, modulation within the chords. It's just using, okay. the, using the chords in the same scale differently. Okay. But it very effectively pulls out such a dark sound. I love it so much. Yeah. Nick, shall we start unpacking the lyrics? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. There's a lot to unpack here. I feel like there is. Yeah. Even though we've got one, two, three... Four four versions of the chorus, recitations of the chorus. We've got one, two, three verses to get into. I'll buy you six bay mares to put in your stable, six golden apples bought with my pay. I'll buy you six bay mares to put in your stable, six golden apples bought with my pay. Oh, oh my God. Already. Please. So much. Please. Oh, I've got the vapors. Okay. So we have in this first verse the contrast between six and seven. Mmm, yes. I'm the piper who calls the sweet tune, but I must be gone by the seventh day. I am the first piper who calls the sweet tune, but I must be gone by the seventh day. Okay, oh, go on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm having a thought. I'm having a brain thought. Is this song in six, seven? No. Oh, okay. It's not. <laughs> I'm thinking of a phrase. So, Nick, maybe I'm reading way too far into this, but do, are, are you familiar with the phrase to be at sixes and sevens? Oh, I've heard it before. Sure. Or, you know, I'm at six and sevens with him. Is that just out of sorts? Yeah, it's out of sorts. It's a state of confusion. It's a it's um, a disagreement. So okay. I don't know that that is built in in an intentional way to this, but it's just something that kind of struck me. Yeah, I mean, there there is no other reference to numbers so maybe there is a significance there because if he had just put the seven i must be gone by the seventh day right then i wouldn't be reading any really anything into it but but yeah there are sixes in there that's interesting yeah, it's kind of an interesting hidden numerology i mean i i also think that like six is a balanced even number you have three on one side three on the other it's literally balanced mm -hmm. seven is a magical number yes fair enough so it's sort of like i'm going to give you these earthly things these mm. things that you desire these things that that really exist but i but i am a a magic i don't really exist in that in the same way that you do 
Yeah, okay. Listen up, six, as a seven is talking. <sighs> okay, I also want to talk about golden apples. Okay, that reminds me of Hercules. The Disney film? Well, the mythical <laughs> character. I'm so, so angry. <laughs> You're a troll. <laughs> I, I am. I live under a bridge. Well, so golden apples are a theme throughout mythology. Sure. And they, they do occur quite a lot in Greek uh, mythology, but they also occur in Celtic mythology. Okay. The one that I'm the most familiar with is the legend with the golden, ap- with the golden apples that I'm the most familiar with is... The start of the Trojan War is one. The original, like, what started the entire thing was... Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. There was a banquet to celebrate a marriage that Zeus was holding, and Mm -hmm. Eris, the goddess of discord who had not been invited, created a golden apple and rode on it to the most beautiful and threw it into the party. And Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite were like, well, obviously it's for me. And Zeus, not wanting to resolve it for obvious reasons... right. Gave the task to Paris of Troy. It's Paris, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And for Hercules, one of his tasks, one of his his labors was to go pick the golden apples, but he couldn't do it. I think it was like no mortal man could do it. So he went and asked Atlas. Atlas went to go pick them. Uh, but in order to get Atlas to do it, Hercules had to shoulder the world because that Atlas was a titan who was being punished by holding up the world. Mm. And Atlas comes back with the apples. She says, mm, you know what? Maybe I'll just keep the apples. You keep holding the world. Why should I take it back? Right. Hercules says, uh, okay, fine. Um, you got me. <laughs> you got me. But just hold on to it for just a second. Let me readjust. It's a little sore on my shoulder. Oh, right, right, right. And Atlas is like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And then Atlas takes back the world and Hercules is like, good on you. I'll, I'll be taking these apples. Thanks. That's how he went from zero to hero. That's what I hear, actually, yeah. You know that song? Glad you remember the 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 lyric. The lyrics. Her. That's the original <laughs> lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> okay, golden apples. Yes. Golden apples. Oh, golden apples are often protected by some kind of a hideous beast, monster, dragon, etc. Sure. So to say, oh yeah, I'm going to give you six golden apples, baby. That's a f- lot of golden apples yeah. if we're talking mythological, mythological ones. Or just the fact that I have enough expendable income that I could buy six apples made out of gold. Yeah, right. That's the literal one. Yeah. Okay. And who am I? I'm the piper who calls the sweet tune, but I must be gone by the seventh day. What's the seventh day? What is the significance there? Is that... To me, seventh day means, like, God rested on the seventh day. That's the only significance of a seventh day that I have. Well, but again, it's a magical number. So, you know, like True. in a lot of the fairy myths, on at the seventh year, you have to return to the fairy queen. Okay. You know, a lot of those myth, myths in America were a, a kind of adapted to fit the American pantheon. And so right. it's often deals made with the devil. You have to, you know, at seven years, you have to go back. Yeah. The translation is made to be significant to us, even though originally it meant something completely and utterly different. Well, I think that, you know, seven is a, again, it's a magical number and we often, you know, we, there are seven days in a week. We, we like to measure things in terms of seven. There's kind of a yeah. recreation. Like you said, re, God rested on the seventh day. Yeah. Yeah. He worked for six days. He rested on the seventh day. That's where we have the sixes and, sixes and sevens again. Yeah. So rather than rest... The whistler must travel on. Right. Can't stay anywhere for more than a week. And maybe it's something like, I'm going to woo you for six days. you got to make your choice. you got to make your decision. I'm not going to be here for forever, you know? Yeah. Hit it or quit it. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah. You must be this tall to ride this ride. Sure. That one doesn't quite work. No, not right. Not right. It's no. not. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to our lawyers about that one. So then we have the chorus. Uh, no, sorry. Then we, yes, then we have yeah. the chorus. So mm-hmm. come on, I'm a whistler. I have a fife and a drum to play. Da, 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 da. So come on, I'm a whistler. I have a fife and a drum to play. A little velvet mondegreen for you. Is it a bear? Is he shaking his hair? 
Is it Velvet Mondegreen? I always thought it was, I have a fife, and I've come to play. Oh, well, yeah, that works too. Yeah, I have a fife, and I know how to use it, baby. It's not just for show. So a fife is just a tiny little flute. No, that's a piccolo. What's a, no, what's a fife? A fife? A fife is a small flute. It's, a fife is specifically a, a flute for a military band. A fife and drum. Yeah. Those were used to give signals on the battlefield and keep the soldiers all in line. So it's a, it's a little wooden, it's a little wooden flute. But it's a, it's not like a recorder where you blow over the, where you blow through a mouthpiece. It is like a flute where you blow yeah. over the hole, right? Yeah, you blow across it. But it doesn't proper. have a manual, it doesn't have mechanical keys. It has just right. the manual so it's only holes. in one key. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So get ready for the whistler. I whistle along on the seventh day. I whistle along on the seventh day. So Nick, you know, when we first were exposed to this music, we were associating with a lot of traveling performers. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, there was always that kind of very literal connection to this song of, and you know, back when I was doing more of the the itinerant lifestyle, which I did for some time, mm-hmm. I felt a lot of relationship to this song, you know, like, yeah, I'm here. Get it while it's hot, whether that means, you know, a romantic relationship or a friendship or, you know, whatever kind of experience you want. You got to get it while I'm here because I literally whistle along on the seventh day. Right. My time is limited regardless of where I am. Yeah. Right. And like I said with the, the interview with Ray, that's probably the reason Empty Hats played this song. One of the reasons. It's also the only Tull song that Michael Riley would allow on site. Right. It's also a straight banger. I mean, it's, you it's, know. It, it is rocking, yeah. And people who go to, to Renaissance fairs, of course, are going to know who Jethro Tull is, you know, the There's regular. There's a bit of an so, overlapping Venn diagram. So there. they'll they'll love that, yeah. It all makes sense. So then we have this sort of, you know, okay, we know who he is. He, mm-hmm. We know the offer that he's making. And then we get a little bit more information. All kinds of sadness I've left behind me. Many's the day when I have done wrong. Ooh, a dark and mysterious past. Yeah. But... I'll be yours forever and ever. Climb in the saddle and whistle along. All kinds of sadness I left behind me. Then is the day when I have done wrong. But I'll be yours forever and ever. Climb in the saddle and whistle along. So there is a degree of, it's not just, hey, I'm going to woo you and we'll have a good time while I'm here and then I'm leaving on the seventh day. It's it's legitimate. Like, hey, join me. I would like a relationship with you. We can make beautiful music together. If you're bold enough to leave everything that you know be- behind you, put yeah, down the pitchfork and pick up the drumsticks. We've got some music to play. Let's start a band. Let's start a band. Yeah. So, Nick, I want to reference another song here. Okay. Did you pull up the song, Would You Go With Me by Josh Turner? Okay. Should we have a little listen to that? Oh, banjo. Whoa. Steel guitar. Mandolin. Not expecting that voice. <laughs> if we roll down streets of fire, would you hold on to me tighter as the summer sun got higher? If we roll from town to town and never shut it down, would you go with me? Lost in fields of clover Would we walk even closer Until the trip was over And would it be okay If I didn't know the way If If I I gave gave you my hand hand, Would you take take it and make me The happiest man in the world if I told you my heart couldn't beat one more minute without you, girl, would you accompany me to the edge of the sea? Let me know if you're really a dream. How do you so? So would you? 
I hate, and I can tell you, I can pretty confidently say that I bet Raven does too. I hate that I'm liking country music more and more. Mm, yeah, it's in, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's it's a sign of aging. It's because of the instrumentation, though. Really, like I I have to deal with the singing, but the ah. Oh. Yeah, the, that song all of the, in particular is well played. Oh my well gosh. instrumented. The mandolin is off the chain. The banjo, the starting banjo? Yeah. Rock and my face. Josh Turner's voice, to put it simply, makes my panties hit the floor. I sploosh. I I would I would. Yes, Josh Turner, I would go. I would go with you. I would go with you to, you to answer your question. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to bring that up is oh, because man. Would you go with me? You know, it's a similar sentiment. Sure. I'm the rover from town to town. I'm bound to this life. There's nothing I can do about it. You want to come? Yeah, be a part of this with me. Right. Whether it's getting behind me on my milk white steed or getting up here in this kick lift Chevy, there is a, a well-established musical form, which is... Get up in my truck, girl. Yeah, in so many words, right. Yeah, but so the sentiment words. is always the same. Yeah, exactly. And what the offer is as well, it's sort of like, you know, yes, you can leave what you know and go with me well, where we will see the edges of the ocean and fly in the clouds, you know, coming, coming back to the to Tull here. Deep red are the sunsets in mystical places. Black are the nights in summer day sands. We'll find the speck of truth in each riddle. Hold the first grain of love in our hands. Deep red are the sunsets in mystical places. Black are the nights on summer day sands. We'll find the speck of truth in each riddle. Hold the first grain of love in our hands. There's sort of a, a really mystical voyage that's being yeah. proposed here. And again, going back to when those verses hit, it's it's got that darker sound. It makes it more mysterious. Yeah, it's explaining the watching the sunset on the summer summer day sands. A callback, very nice yep, yep, as yep, usual. Love, love that. It, but there's oh, it's the poetry is particularly in that verse, just yeah. so good, so good. That's all I got. Just so good. Well, and and also along with that darker musical change we have the imagery of deep red sunsets black nights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then within that you know within all this mystery and confusion finding the speck of truth right embodied in a grain of love yeah a grain of sand on the summer day sands that we can hold in our hands together and 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 a grain of sand inside of an oyster turns into a pearl Whoa! and our two hands held together look like an oyster science from Nick McGill. Boom. Bivalve science. Thank you. I I had I had a bottleneck of jokes. <laughs> None of them could get out. None of them could get out. They all they all stuck and died. Okay. So it's you know, I almost I I like to imagine this song as sort of a sort of a, a scales that's being presented. And on the one side of the scale you have Everything that you've ever known, your life, your your hometown, your mm -hmm. your stability, and on the other hand, you have a single grain of truth wrapped in a mystery. Right. It, there's no guarantee that it yeah. will end in something happy. There's no guarantee that it will prove to be what your hopes and dreams are, but at least you'll get out. At least you'll experience. At least you won't be trapped as... I don't know, whatever this song is implying the listener is trapped as. The listener is trapped as. Uh, well, and, you know, there's no real implication of it, of them being trapped. It's just, you know, here's my offer. That's true. Yeah, it's not saying, oh, you're just a lowly cow maiden, you know. <laughs> it's, I just made that up. Cow maiden. Mm. Yeah. A maiden yeah. who takes care of cows. Yeah. You know what, though? Cow maidens do get health insurance. There's no health. There's no mention of health insurance on this song. That's right. But that argument, you know, having lived alongside the Wren people, mm -hmm. this is an argument that I saw kind of functioning, in, especially in terms of romantic entanglements with others. You know, that sense of like carpe diem. Yeah. 
Carpe diem in my pants. Carpe my pants. Carpe you gotta pantalos. You, you gotta get it while I'm here, and I, you know, and if you come with me back to my tent, I will offer you <laughs> a, a grain of mystical truth, or put more directly, syphilis. Yes, just a grain. A grain of syphilis. <laughs> now, when you say it like that, that actually brought up something that you should talk to your therapist about. Yeah, that I should go see a doctor for. <laughs> that yes. It's not, it's so interesting that I'm asking you to change your life. Yeah. You're not worth me settling down for. Right. I'm worth you uprooting everything you know. Yes. And I think that there is, I think there's a lot to be said about that observation. One of which is, you know, the kind of mystical answer, which is the whistler is sort of implied to be almost cursed with this lifestyle, bound mm, to this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They cannot... And so, you know, perhaps the fairy's curse is if you stay anywhere for more than six days, you will burst into flame and never be able to play your, your fife again. Right. Or never find true happiness. That sounds a lot more like a, a fairy curse than, than, than spontaneous combustion. Hey, you know, some depends on the fairy. I mean, I wouldn't be happy being spontaneously combusted. So I think they're pretty similar. It's like that film Speed. You know, if the if the tour <laughs> van goes under 60 miles an hour, right. a bomb explodes. If your horse stays still for more than six days, it explodes. If you play anything less fast than a 16th note, your flute explodes. If you play anything that's not in six, seven time. You explode. You explode. <laughs> so many explosions. <laughs> but there is often, you know, in that kind of storytelling, there is the kind of the blessing slash curse, the like, yes, you have this magical, amazing gift. Here's what it comes with. You sell your soul to the devil at the crossroads to play the guitar, but it means that the devil owns your soul. You know, the. Yeah. Right. So that's the kind of mystical explanation. The misogynistic explanation <laughs> yes, is yeah. I ain't going to stop what I'm doing because I'm a rock star, baby. Uh, yeah, exactly it. You are lucky I'm inviting you into this life. You are lucky that I have given you the syphilis. You can brag that you got it from the Whistler. Sell it on eBay. Sell samples. Here's some penicillin. The first hit's free. Tune in to our other podcast, Sell Syphilis to Me, (laughs) where Nick and I will make more inappropriate jokes about sexually transmitted infections. We'll talk about Al Capone. Did he die of syphilis? He did die of syphilis, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Nick. Omen. Anything else that we want to say about this amazing song? I just, I love that break in between the two final choruses, that like, that moment of silence, and then he, and it kind of echoes in, and then there's a little reverb on the voice when he says, so come on. Yeah. I was on the seventh day, so come on, I'm a whistler. It adds even more power to the punch ending the song in a song that's already crazy powerful and punchy. You know, it also goes back, ah, I'm finding so many parallels with this song, Nick. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Pied Piper. Sure, yeah. Or even to go back to the Greeks of the legends uh, surrounding Dionysus. Mm -hmm. Dionysus came from the East. He's considered, you know, an Eastern God who arrived on on the scene kind of late. And everywhere he went, there would be these amazing kind of parties, happenings, and people would follow him along. And he wouldn't, you know, he'd stay in one place for a long time. He would sort of set, he would sit down, establish this incredible magic thing that no one has ever seen before, and then Mm -hmm. he would move on to the next part. That is, Dionysus was the Greek, Bacchus is the Roman version, I believe. Correct, yeah. God of wine, party, kind of the mysticism of the beat. Yeah, a bacchanal, yeah. Yeah. Woof. Okay. I mean, I th- I think that's pretty good for Whistler, for me anyway. Uh, did you have anything else? Did you used to identify with this song, Nick? I think w- for the the briefest of moments when I did entertain the idea of maybe working the circuit, I did mm, Yeah. for maybe the year that I thought it feasible, probably right around when, when you and I first started Feckless Moms, because the thought of you and I doing a traveling show Maybe probably with Steph because we knocked the hell out of that uh, that that trunk show that we did. Sure, we did. But no, not beyond that. I was never one to travel. I was never one to to have that kind of nothing pejorative about it, but that vagrant lifestyle. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
But you you did. Why was a vagrant for many years? Yeah, right. It works perfectly. You loved Tull. You played the flute. You were a vagrant. Why wouldn't you identify with a song that kind of lionizes you, that kind of makes you like something yeah. something a little more special? At least tiger eyes. Tiger eyes. You've got those tiger eyes, baby. <laughs> I've got the I am the tiger. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So what's next week, Omen? Do you know? You you have to know. Uh, mm, yes. Next week is a, a as much of a a switchback change of, yeah. of tone as maybe we've ever had on a Tull album between this song and the next. The next song is P Broke, Cap in Hand. Yeah. Yeah. Debbie Downer comes to the party. <laughs> More like Debbie Existential Dread. Oh my gosh. It is the painting that this song produces, the imagery, in three verses is just, oh, but we'll we'll get on with it. Yeah, well. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Until next week, Nick. Yeah. I propose a trade. Oh. Yeah. I will give our listeners six golden apples if okay. they give us five stars in a review. What a deal. You'd be losing apples not to give us a five-star review. That's right. I will give you six golden apples if you give us $5 a month on Patreon. Hey, that's less than a dollar an apple. That's right. And they're made of gold. Gold. Nobody does gold anymore, but We're gonna... they look pretty. We're going to give an apple to our most beautiful listener. Ooh, I'm just going to throw it in the Patreon chat and see. <laughs> Watch see. everything go wild. <laughs> Until next week, I am the god of mischief, Omen Sade. I am the rotten golden apple, Nick McGill. We are the three bay mares each, feckless momes. And this is the scandalous flute song that is Talk Tall to Me. Welcome, welcome, all gods and demigods. It gives me such electric pleasure <laughs> on this day to celebrate the marriage of Peleus and Theseus. Oh, everyone, let's get down and funky. Boogie now, boogie now, boogie now, boogie now. Oh my god, Aphrodite, hey. Hey, girl, hey, what is going on over here? Oh my god, I love that dress. Wow. I, I think it is a bold and wonderful move that you decided not to wear anything but a couple of vines. You know, they're very in. They're very in right now. It's spring. I just wanted to get, you know, I just it's what they're it's what everyone is wearing in the east. I believe it. You all you're always the first one to bring that over. Bring over the style. I, yeah, someone has to What is Oh my god, what's is this? That an apple? <gasps> It's gold. It says on it, for the most beautiful. Oh, well, I'll take oh, that. Oh, girl, that must be for you. No, 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 no. It must. Maybe it is for me. No, 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 no. It's, it's for you. You are clearly, clearly the most beautiful. Are you kidding? I had like six cups of ambrosia. I'm so bloated right now. Girl, it's obviously for you. You just you just like radiant today. You could you could literally have any mortal that you wanted. Uh, You're like literally the goddess of love. Like literally. literally I am. Yes. But I mean, look at those vines. Honey, you are more Oh. Oh, who's that? What? Oh, oh my Is God. that I don't Who's she? <gasps> She she came from that's that's the girl from Troy. Oh, she is pretty. You know what they say about her though? Oh, mm. it's something she it's got to be something catty. She, it's so catty. Listen, what is it? no tea, but she said while we were in the bathroom, she told me that Talk Tall to Me is a proud member of the Feckless Moms Audio Network. 
give her that apple right now.